welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be looking at cracking. Previously we have talked about fractional distillation. This is the process by which crude oil is split into different fractions. Each fraction has a number of different hydrocarbons with a number of different carbons in their chain which are roughly the same. So the first fraction has carbon chains of 1 to 4, the next fraction has carbon chains of 5 to 9 and so on. The mixture of hydrocarbons in crude oil is not evenly split amongst all of the alkanes. The smaller alkanes that are used for things like gas and petrol for fuel are less common than those that have longer chains which are used for things like road surfacing in the heavy fractions. This is pictured on the screen here. You can see that we have very few of the small useful fractions and lots of the longer fractions. These fractions are not as useful. Cracking is the process that is used to turn these less useful long chain alkenes into more useful shorter chain alkenes. Cracking splits the long hydrocarbons up into two shorter hydrocarbons. The numbers of carbons and hydrogens remain constant. Here we start with 20 carbons. This splits up into a chain of 8 carbons and a chain of 12 carbons. And you can see that these two add together. Our hydrocarbon started with 42 hydrogens and this splits up into 18 hydrogens and 24 hydrogens and again you can see that these two add up. Pause the video now and try these questions. In the first example we are trying to write out the formula of the large hydrocarbon that we started with. So we end up with carbon chains of 3 and 4, which means that we started with a carbon chain of 7. We then have hydrogens of 8 and 8, which means that in our original hydrocarbon we had 16 hydrogens. This is heptane. In this next example we start with 42 hydrogens and we end with a chain of 36 and an unknown chain. So we're going to take 42 minus 36, which tells us that our unknown chain has six carbons within it. We're then going to look at the hydrogens. We start with 86, our other chain has 72, which means that we have 14 hydrogens left. In our final example, we start with 25 carbons. One of our chains that we produce has 5, which means the other chain must have 20 carbons. We start with 52 hydrogens. One of our chains has 12 hydrogens, which means that our second chain has 40. There are not enough hydrogens in the long hydrocarbon to produce two alkenes. One alkane is produced and a hydrocarbon of another family called the alkenes is also produced. Here we have a hydrocarbon of 12 carbons and 26 hydrogens. We're going to split this up into two different products. This hydrocarbon has six carbons and 14 hydrogens. Each carbon is bonded to four different things. This is a saturated hydrocarbon. We've used up 14 of the original 26 hydrogens that we used. 
This means that we only have 12 left. We cannot produce another molecule of hexane. Instead, the other molecule that we are going to produce is from the alkene family and has a double bond between two of the carbons. This allows us to only use 12 hydrogens. Much like the alkane family, we can name and use the formulas of the different alkenes to draw their structures. Ethene is the smallest alkene. All alkenes have to have a carbon to carbon double bond. Therefore, you have to have at least two carbons to have an alkene. All carbons still have to have four lines four bonds coming out of them. Propene has three carbons. You have to take care when drawing the alkenes that you do not end up with carbons with too many bonds. This one here already has four, so it doesn't need another hydrogen. Butene has four carbons and eight hydrogens. So you can see from the pattern that in the alkenes, the number of hydrogens is double that of the number of carbons. Pentene has five carbons and 10 hydrogens. Hexene has six carbons and 12 hydrogens surrounding it. So just go around each carbon, count how many bonds it already has, and fill in enough hydrogens so that it has four bonds in total. So when you see the numbers for the Kraken, whichever hydrocarbon has double the number of hydrogens is the alkene that is being produced. You can identify alkenes by using the bromine test. Alkenes decolorize bromine water rapidly from brown to colorless, whereas alkenes do not. For each of these reactions, draw the products. Remember, one is an alkene and one is an alkene with a double bond. Pause the video now. So in this first reaction here, our product that's been circled in red has three carbons and it has eight hydrogens. This makes this an alkene, as the number of hydrogens is double plus two of the number of carbons. The product circled in blue is the alkene. We can tell because we have double the number of hydrogens, which means we need to put in a double bond before we fill in the hydrogens, making sure all of the carbons have four bonds. In the second reaction, our first product is the alkene, where we have double the number of hydrogens. So we have seven carbons. We have a double bond between two of those carbons. 
and then we can draw in the hydrogens to fill all carbons with a valency of 4. And our final product, circled in red, is an alkene with 8 carbons. Each of these carbons has four bonds and is saturated with hydrogens. In this final example, pause the video and name the two products that are produced. So here we have two carbons and we have six hydrogens. This is our alkene, so this is ethane. Here we have four carbons and we have a double bond. So this is butene rather than butane. Here we have six carbons with a double bond. So this is an alkene and this is hexene. And here we have three carbons, no double bond. So this is propane and alkene. Thank you for watching my video. I hope that you found it helpful. Please remember to subscribe and follow me on Twitter at Miss Adams Chem and Instagram Miss Adams Chemistry for regular updates on new videos and flashcards. Bye for now.